time for our 360 round. We want to talk all about Tesla. We've gotten the latest in. No word on the $25,000 car. The robo taxi event from 88 is now in October. A lot of people have been disappointed in seeing a lot of volatility in the stock, and people are not buying in so fast. Ross Gerber, President, CEO, Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management, and Steve Wesley, founder, managing partner at the Wesley Group, and also a former board member at Tesla. It's great to see you both. And it pains me because there was so much excitement. There's no doubt Tesla's been a great producer and has met in many ways. But it's just not growing at the same speed. And Steve, you had a list. You said one, the robo taxi, two, the twenty-five thousand dollar car, and three, the Optimus robot. Uh, energy, even though it did well for the company, is not going to save the company, right, Steve? Look, that's essentially right. And so, give Tesla some credit. They they beat top end uh, revenue growth by a billion dollars. That's not bad. But your point's absolutely correct. Looking at flat growth this year, fourth straight quarter of reduced earnings. But you kind of passed over energy sales and they've just gone from 4.7 gigawatt hours of power delivered to 9.4 gigawatts. That is a 100% quarter over quarter increase. At the current rate, energy sales could become 20% of Tesla's revenues. That is a big deal. They're rapidly on the way to becoming the world's largest utility with full self-driving and the humanoid robots in the pipeline and possibly a perhaps not $25,000 car, but a $30,000 car likely built on the same chassis as the Model 3 and the Model Y. So they're retuning things, but you got to give them credit for pulling the energy numbers up. That's dramatic. Yeah. And, you know, I was looking back at my notes, but, but the thing I was thinking about here it was, um, you know, the profitability on the cars has dropped, right, to five-year lows. But the sales yeah. have still been pretty good. Ross, it's not enough for you either. You've been out on Tesla for some time. Yeah, I mean, I think the energy sales point is a really good point other than it's a lumpy business. So just extrapolating out that they're going to continue at this pace might be a little premature, although I love, you know, energy storage as an overall business. But when you look at the car business, I think that they've plateaued and I think investors are going to just need to accept this, that Tesla cannot sell more cars without lowering prices and lowering margins. And that, you know, negative reinforcing cycle has has really affected Tesla and its earnings potential over the long term. Essentially, Elon has become what I'm now calling an anti-marketer of Tesla, where every week he does more things to drive its core consumers away. And his core consumers are now done with the brand. And it's really sad to me. It, it's, it's, it's really a sad thing that this has happened. Um, but that's just what's happened. And so I don't see them selling more than 2 million cars with the current thing, whether they have robo taxis or not. You can buy a Tesla for $23,000 on cars.com right now. If you make a small Model 3, I don't think people want robo taxis that bad. I think there's plenty of taxis all over the place. There's Ubers, there's scooters, there's, there's a million ways to get from A to B. And to just think you're going to sell millions of cars when consumers don't like your brand is a little bit premature. So so I think a lot of these ideas are wonderful, and I'm still an investor in Tesla, but I think it's potentially the best days are behind Tesla, and that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. And look, 1010 is the new date, October 10th for the RoboTaxi event. And you talk about driving people away, Ross, and, you know, he's leaned right. There were talks that he was going to support uh, the Trump campaign. Trump came out and said uh, he never talked to him about that, you know, the $45 million. But, you know, it's back and forth because um, some of the subsidies and cuts that they get are from the Democrats. And if he's moving to the right, they won't get those. That's part of the reason why the company did well in the last quarter. If he moves to the right, they're not going to get those same, um, you know, perks. Right, Ross? Well, it's true. I mean, Trump has made it very clear that if he wins the presidency, he's going to take away all the benefits for, benefits for EV. And for like a few days, he said nice things about Elon until Elon back peddled on the 45 million when he realized Kamala Harris was running and has a very good challenger. Trump has a challenger. And then the minute he back thought, back peddled, then Trump started saying bad things about EVs yesterday. And so it's just like 
this whole strategy doesn't make any sense to me if I'm trying to sell cars. And now you've got the LGBTQ community just coming up in arms against Tesla. And this is a very influential community and they're large buyers of Teslas, whether Elon wants to accept it or not. And having this community um, against you is a huge, huge error for Elon and Tesla. So, you know, once again, I, I just love a week where something actually was good for marketing of Tesla, you know, on top of Kanye West's and his half-naked girlfriend in front of a Cybertruck, which doesn't sell trucks either. So, you know, I don't know. I just don't know anymore. You know, it is what it is, and there's nothing I can do to change it. And I think investors have to take note of this. And for our clients, we need to invest in things that are growing. Right, right. Look, there's, you know, it was the fastest growing company uh, for a long time. Steve, do you not touch it anymore? Is Tesla taboo at this point? Are you out? Do you sell your shares? What do you do? So we distributed all of our shares 10 years ago. But look, let, let's come back to the numbers. I generally agree a lot of what Ross just said, except for the energy part. Energy is booming. The demand for energy globally, this is the utilities that are all now faced with huge data center demand, more people using chat GPT, more electric cars, trucks, and everything else. They're going to be buying Tesla Gigapacks as long and as far as you can imagine. So the energy division is a real deal. It's the only auto company that understands the world's vehicles and energy are converging, and they're in first place. Second, Steve, I, I actually is, agree with you on that. Good. So the, the, I agree with you. The, the, the cupboard's a little bare. They, they need to get some new products to market. I think this 30,000 vehicle will help them. And you can say growth is slowed. It has. They're between two waves. But don't forget, they still have almost 50% of the U.S. EV market. They control almost all of the uh, recharging capability in both North America and Europe. Uh, it's basically Tesla and BYD running away with the global EV market. That's not terrible. Now you come to the third part. Humanoid robots, who knows? It's a big deal. It's probably a number of years out. But full self-driving is not a number of years out. You can get in a full self-driving robo-taxi in San Francisco tonight and Los Angeles and Phoenix and Austin, soon to be Washington. It's happening now, and it appears to me yeah. Tesla has a bit of an edge. So all eyes Yeah, are but it's happening from their competitor, yeah. Steve. You know, this is Google you're talking about, not Tesla. I mean, Tesla it really is like a tech company. It really is more so of a tech company. Yeah, people are yeah. looking at it in so many different ways. I know it's an auto company, but it's almost like a tech company for all the things that it has as potential. Um, Ross, do you buy this for the kids, for the grandkids at 218? Do you buy Tesla here today for the well, long haul? Well, I, once again, I still own Tesla, and, and it's a holding in my fund GK, and it's a holding for my clients still. And I don't want to eliminate the potential that maybe they do do these things in some reasonable amount of time. But I'm also a big believer in valuations and Tesla's valuation is well higher than it deserves based off multiples comparative to Microsoft and Nvidia. And so that I think is a problem for the stock short term. You know, when you talk about in between two waves, I've spent a lot of time in Laguna Beach over the last three weeks in, in the waves. And sometimes there's a really long time between sets and you, you know, you're sitting out in the water for a long time in the cold waiting for that next wave. And, you know, that's the question. When does the next set come in? And I don't think it's that soon. So that's the issue. It's when are they going to complete these yeah. things? Not if, it's when. And it might be five years from now. So, yeah. so there's yeah. competitors right. like Google out there and Uber, and that's a reality. Yeah. Ross Gerber and Steve Wesley, and I see another analyst downgrades the shares. Um, and maybe if Elon Musk sort of zip, zip it, um, you know, he cannot alienate some folks. Ross Gerber, Steve Wesley, thank you both.